Hi and welcome. Uh, today I will be talking about power as a physical term and I think it's important to explain the basic principles of that in order to understand uh, videos that I and the articles that I intend to write and uh, make in the future about uh, electricity, uh, batteries, electric motors, electric bicycles, uh, motorcycles, uh, bicycle transmission and in faster and slower gears and so on. All that boils down to some basic principles out of which I think understanding uh, power and force and energy are the most of most of highest importance. So this video is about that and these uh, beautiful drawings I draw like a three-year-old uh, will help us <laughs> make explain that because I think it's best to use practical examples and an example that I would use for this is say that I have a, a job uh, to transport some building material from a warehouse to a construction site. I, I give you a good price $15 and <laughs> I, I make a deal and that is the job or the amount of work that I have to do to transport a lot of heavy construction materials from one place to another. For that I would most probably be using some sort of trailer with on wheels preferably unless it's very snowy and that is what I would load and then I would need to make it move. In order to move it I would need a certain amount of force to either push it or pull it and that force, I will draw it like this. It is important the direction, both in terms of line, do I try to go from top to bottom, which would cause no effect, or to pull it towards the place where I want to go. So the direction is important, and also the, the path is important, but also the direction, whether I'm moving in the right place or in the opposite direction. So force has both intensity and direction and I will sign it as letter F and force is measured in Newtons that is the international uh, unit for measuring and expressing force so that we do not rely on I was pulling moderately strongly or almost full strength this is comparable <laughs> measurable and we can use it for calculations and everything, so we have those me measurements and force is expressed in Newtons. <clears throat> now, in order to do the work that I have to do, I will have to use that force along a certain distance. So, it is not the same amount of work if I have to pull this for 100 meters or 100 kilometers. And it won't cause the same, <laughs> of course, it's, it's not the same amount of work. That's I think it's, it's, it's obvious, intuitive. So the, the amount of work is affected by both the force used and the distance that we will travel. So we will express the distance in, with letter S and it is measured in meters. That is the international standard unit. You can use kilometers for thousand meters and uh, decimeters or millimeters for shorter distances or some other metric, a non-metric system, the imperial system, but the basics are the same. Uh, metric system is just a bit more elegant, but it's uh, the principle is still the same. And that will result in the amount of work. I'll assign letter A for the amount of work, and it is measured and expressed in joules with letter J. My handwriting is criminally poor, I apologize. So the further we go, the more work is done. Or the more force we use also, the more work is done if, it, if the distance stays the same. Because it's not the same amount of work if I go just casually or if I have to run, it will not be as difficult, it will not be as tiring, it's not the same amount of work. So both of these affect the amount of work done. So that is, that is one thing that we have here to consider. And now uh, it, it comes without even thinking, but 
it needs to be taken care of. We need some way to create force. I can try concentrating like Luke Skywalker, <laughs> but it doesn't work in practice, at least not for me. So, in order to create the force, I would have to either pull this by myself or perhaps persuade a horse to, to help me, to give me a hand <laughs> or, or use a car. And those would be ways to, to create force. Now, out of these these three methods, which one of those do you think would uh, make the, the job, uh, get the job done fastest in the smallest amount of time? And we will disregard any French cars that will probably break down <laughs> halfway through. But <laughs> generally speaking, we would probably get it done fastest using a car, then horse and then a man and that is the the definition that is what power what uh, sorry what strength is strength or power my english is not perfect but that is what creates force and strength or power is uh, the amount of work done within a certain amount of time i will write it down I will say letter P for power, it is expressed and measured in watts and it boils down to the amount of work done in joules divided by the time taken to do that amount of work, letter T, with measured in seconds. We can use hours 3600 seconds and so on, but the principle is still the same. That is what power is. If we have the same amount of work, the one that has most power will do it in the shortest amount of time. So, a human can, human has roughly, you can create roughly 100 watts if you need to work for hours and keep, you know, producing that amount of power, that is a rough equivalent, depending on age, fitness, whatever. Horse, horse has one horsepower. <laughs> the genius Scott, Scottish engineer, Mr. James Watt, or he made a brilliant marketing move when he was playing with steam engines and inventing all that stuff. At that time, Horses were used to haul a lot of things and help with work and everything and so he used a unit for the amount of power that was easy for people to understand and compare and so he used horsepower. One horse has one horsepower. Even today when you buy a car you will offer here it has like 100 or 150 horsepower. Instead, in spite of watts being the internationally accepted standard unit, we still often hear and use horse, horsepower. And one horse can produce roughly, I think it's just under 750 watts. That is the amount of power that a reasonably fit horse can produce for over a longer period of time without being exhausted. So one car gets 50 or 100 horsepower, so 100 horsepower is 7,000 watts or 70 kilowatts that is how much power a car generally can have so the more power we have the more work we can do within the same time frame and looking at it from another angle the more power we have the less time it will take us to do the same amount of work that is the the, the basics now this is not the whole story. There is just one more thing that we need to consider and take into the account. What happens if we run out of petrol or diesel? Or if a horse or a human is starving? They will not have any power. They will not be able to create any force and not able to do any work. So, human will eat preferably bacon. Thank you. 
a horse eats hay or whatever it is in English that horses eat and cars use some sort of fuel, petrol, gasoline, in the United States, uh, diesel, whatever. And what bacon, hay and petrol have all in common is that they are ways to store energy. Because without energy there is no power, no force, no work. We need a way to take that energy out of that storage in order to create power and work. Car's internal combustion engine does exactly that when we give it fuel. Our and horse's body can use food and use chemical processes to create muscles and strength and everything. So there are different ways to get energy out of energy sources where the energy is stored and if you have the right one you can create power and uh, do create force and do work. We can try drinking some petrol and we will poison ourselves but if we put it into a car it has a means of extracting uh, energy and creating power from that and vice versa if we put uh, bacon into a fuel tank it will not end up well and uh, while we can use it and and create energy take that energy and create power so that is uh, another important aspect to, to take care of and what I often uh, hear a misconception I will address that if we don't have enough energy source whatever it is that we're using so our battery is running out if we have a light it will start dimming before it finally goes out or if we are hungry we will be losing strength until we finally can do, can't work anymore and the car if it is lean on fuel if it's running out it will if the fuel is dirty not not very high quality it will have less power still be able to work or completely break down so if we don't have enough energy for the amount of power that we are trying to produce to output to create force to make, do work then then the power will diminish but on the other hand if we have more energy than we need we cannot get more power than we have it that depends on the construction of whatever it is so if we have a an engine that has 100 horsepower it doesn't matter if it has 10 or 100 liters of petrol in the fuel tank it will still have at maximum 100 horsepower not anymore or 70 kilowatts or so any extra energy the same goes for computer uh, power supplies if you buy uh, 1500 watt power supply that does not mean that your computer components will become more powerful no they will just have more power at their disposal should they need it but if they have a certain amount of power that they have they cannot take any more they cannot take any more of that energy okay so after a, a very long uh, uh, explanation the the formula for for energy one of the ways to express it would be power in watts times the time that power has been used or turned on so we have time in seconds that equals I will use letter A to de designate energy and it is expressed in joules now does this look similar could we say that energy is equivalent with the amount of work done if we take the formula for power and say here instead of power we say work divided by time and when we multiply that by time then both of these times will sort of cancel out each other not sort of they will cancel out each other and we have practically saying that energy is equivalent to the amount of work in other words power is a capacity a potential for transferring energy into force that will create work or in yet another way for transferring energy from one shape into the other from one form into the other 
when we uh, put fuel into our car, we have energy that is stored within the, that liquid. We can use it to heat things up or whatever. And when we run that fuel into our, in our engine, we are uh, converting that potential energy, chemical energy basically, into kinetic energy, into our car moving and perhaps holding a trailer behind it or whatever. So that is what power essentially is. It is a potential. If we don't have enough energy, we will not be able to get power. And the, the maximum amount of power of a certain system, at least technical, the ones that are made, built, cannot be exceeded. But if energy is lacking, it will not be achieved. So that would be the, the very basic, very simple explanation that I hope is clear enough. And uh, I hope this, uh, this will help when uh, later I get on with other videos on various different topics. Uh, it's still important to, to keep this in mind in order to more clearly understand it. So I, I hope I explain well. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you in some other video. Cheers. If you like this video, you can click on subscribe and choose this bell option, select all, so you get notified whenever I upload a new video.